Hi there, this is Max from Iridescent Color and today's question is, can you do your entire grade in just one node? Resolve's native toolset provides plenty of powerful tools to shape and finesse the image. Often though, I find the number of possible tools overwhelming and distracting. Most of the time, if you have a good overall look in place, all that a shot needs is the right exposure and balance, a healthy contrast ratio, and perhaps a little bit of shape in the shadows and highlights. Theoretically, you should be able to do all of that within the primary palette. And yet, somehow very simple things are astonishingly hard to do well in there. For example, to adjust exposure photometrically, you need to flip the node to linear and apply gain. Alternatively, the global exposure wheel in the HDR palette does that as well. Similarly, the ideal way to balance your image is not using offset or a combination of lift gamma and gain, but to flip your node to linear and again use gain. And you need to make sure that Luma Mix is set to zero or you might nuke your image. If you want a simple straight contrast adjustment, you can use the contrast knob, but you need to make sure the use S curve for contrast is unchecked in your settings. And then you still need to manually type in the correct value for the pivot if you want to protect middle gray. And if we want a simple shadow roll off, we need to start faffing around with the custom curves. Knowing that, there is no way we can do our entire grade in one node, right? And that's where iridescent colors the grade comes into play. Today I want to show you how this tool can help you get from an image like this to an image like this with just one node. So let's have a look at the tool and as you can see there's quite a few sliders here so let's break it down and start with the first three sliders that we see here. And those are the three sliders that operate in linear. The first slider is an exposure slider and it says exactly what it says on the tin it moves exposure and it does so in photometric stops. That means typing in a one here is exactly the same as if I had exposed one stop over in my camera. The next two sliders are the balance sliders. And again, these operate in linear, so we get pure linear balance, nothing else. And those work slightly different from what you might be used to, and to explain what I mean, I'm gonna turn on the exposure and balance overlay. And as you can see, we get this color wheel here and I'm gonna show you what that does. Uh, if you look at the vector scope here, you can see that the hue angles here in this color wheel are aligned with the vector scope. And what we can do rather than fiddling around with temp or tint, we're actually selecting a target hue, say like a warm yellow, for example, and then we can move our, our balance towards that target using the strength slider. But another thing we can do with this is we can identify in an image like this that we have a strong kind of yellowish color bias in this image and we're losing a lot of color separation because of it. As you can see, all of our colors in this one quadrant here. So we can use the balance target and actually select that bias that we're seeing in the image, like a warm yellowish tint here. And then we can use the balance strength in a negative direction to neutralize that color bias. And very quickly, we can get a lot of more color separation here in the image, and then we can just fine tune how much of that we want. Maybe we want a little bit of that warm bias in the image. And as you can see with just these two sliders, we've been able to very intuitively remove this color bias from the image. Another thing we can do here is you can see we have this neutral balance source eyedropper. And what we can do with this is we can select something in the image we know to be of a neutral gray color, for example, and just click on it and then it gets neutralized and immediately we get a really healthy balance. That might not be the right thing for this image, but you can see how effective it is at getting a good starting point. And then from that sp our starting point, you can still build with your uh, target and strength here to then choose exactly the kind of color bias you want to introduce into the image and use the strength slider to get there. So the next two sliders don't mean need much of an explanation. We can turn on the curve. This is just straight contrast, no S curve, no faff. It's just contrast that by default pivots around middle gray. And then we can move our pivot 
in photometric stops, again, relative to middle gray. And instead of lift, gamma, and gain in this DCTL, we've got shadows, midtones, and highlights, which you might be familiar with if you use a lot of photo editing software like Lightroom, for example. And those, again, just do exactly what they say on the tin. In this image, for example, I feel like the subject here is a little bit hot, uh, and she's also overexposed. So I'm gonna first turn down the exposure ever so slightly. And then I want to work on the tonality in the image. And what I'm noticing is even with the exposure on her face being correct, we've got the highlights look quite blown out and we lose a lot of detail here. So we've got a couple of options of what we can do. The first and obvious one is just use the highlight slider and turn that down a little bit. And you can see we actually get back a lot of detail. And then we can see if we want to rein in those peak highlights as well. And the way we can do that, if I show you the curve, is we can take the white here and then just roll off those peak highlights, turn down the white, and then we can use the high roll which shapes the, the shoulder here. And if we have a stronger shoulder, we can retain more of the highlights here in the face, but then roll off the peak highlights here in the shirt and in the hair. And so very quickly, we've been able to restore a lot of that detail in the highlights of the image without affecting the face too much. And if we feel like this is too matte and we've lost some contrast, we can obviously just go ahead and compensate by increasing the contrast just a tad. And then it's a bit of an iterative process, but very quickly, I think we get to a point where we've been able to restore a lot of detail in the image without affecting parts of the image that we don't want to affect that much. And if we want to shape the shadows in our image, we also have several options. Um, the most obvious is obviously the shadow slider here. And as you can see, if we do that, we can see more into the shadows. We can see more into the fill side of the face, for example. If we move it into a negative direction, we get crunchier shadows. But oftentimes, if I want to see into the shadows more, what I will do is actually the opposite. Rather than adding like this kind of fill curve, I do the opposite and I want to raise the black point. And this is a more cinematic looking way of seeing more into the shadow. So I raise the black point and then I can use the low roll control here to shape how soft or strong that toe is supposed to be. So I can reduce the contrast in a, in a very filmic way create the impression of seeing more into the shadows by softening out that low end without having this aggressive um, fill shape in the curve. And the last option we have to shape our low end is this low shape slider down here and the pivot slider that comes along with it. So if we engage the curve and I just increase this slider here, what you can see is we can somehow soften out the shadows while adding some weight to them at the same time. And the way that we're doing that is we're dropping the low mid-range just below middle gray and then actually brightening the darkest shadows. We're reducing contrast in the shadows, but because of the distribution of how we're doing that, we're adding shape and softening the shadow at the same time. And this is certainly not something that works for every image, but for this image in particular, I think it works really, really well. And that last slider is just a chroma mix slider. So if you increase the contrast, for example, you can choose how much of this you want to happen on the RGB image, which will cause an increase in saturation when you increase contrast. Uh, versus just the Luma component of the image to the left where you can increase contrast without affecting saturation, which can give you more of a bleach bypass kind of look. And as you can see, what's really great is you can bypass these individually. So even though you're working on just one node, you can still check what your balance, for example, is doing and what your uh, tone adjustment is doing uh, within this one node without having to turn all of them off at the same time. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to try the new tool, you can head to my website and download the demo for free. 
and if you would like to purchase the tool uh, make sure to make use of the introductory sale that's running until next Wednesday the 29th of October. Thank you for watching and I see you again very soon.